Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on testing ions. So in the previous tutorial, we learned about the reducing ability of halide ions, how to test their reducing ability, and also how to identify which halide ions you have in a solution using acidified silver nitrate. Now we're going to have a look at qualitative analysis as well. So we can find out and identify what is in an unknown solution, so which compounds are present there, by systematically carrying out qualitative tests for the presence of different ions. So we're going to have two things we're looking for. We can look for anions and we can look for cations as well. Let's look at carbonate ions to start with them. So we can test for carbonate ions by mixing the unknown compound with a dilute acid. So if we've got carbonate ions present, they'll react with the protons, the H plus in the solution, and they'll form carbon dioxide. So you'll see effervescence bubbling occurring. So we can give an example of this. So CO32 minus, that's a carbonate ion, it would react with any protons that have come from the acid and it will release carbon dioxide and H2O. Now, when we select which acid, we tend to use nitric acid because the nitrate ions that that then drops into the solution doesn't react later on with other tests. If we used a different acid like hydrochloric acid, we would then drop a load of chloride ions into the solution and that might give us a positive result for a halide test later on and that would be a false positive. So we do tend to use HNO3, nitric acid. If you want to test, if you see effervescence and you need to test whether that is carbon dioxide, I'm sure you'll remember a test from GCSE. So we can bubble that gas through lime water. So we'll collect it by a collecting tube and bubble it through lime water. And the carbon dioxide is going to react with the lime water, giving the white calcium carbonate precipitate. And that is what makes it look cloudy. So if you're curious as to what that actually was in a chemical reaction, that's the CO2 reacting with lime water, which is calcium hydroxide. And we're going to get calcium carbonate, which is insoluble. And so it will disperse in, soluble, uh, in solid droplets throughout the solution and make it look cloudy, milky white. And that tells you that you had carbon dioxide present. For our sulfate ions, we can test using the displacement with barium ions in a solution. So as long as we can get barium ions in there, then it will make barium sulfate, which is an insoluble white precipitate. In order to get barium ions in there, we could use any barium chloride, barium nitrate, for example. So think about what tests you're doing later on. If you're going to test on the same test tube, halide tests later on, then don't use barium chloride because you're going to put a load of chloride ions into the solution. So we can use barium nitrate in that example. OK, so it depends. Read the question really, really carefully. Are you doing the tests on this, all the tests on the same test tube one after the other? Or are you using a fresh solution each time? It matters if you're dropping extra ions into the solution. So we need to get um, barium ions in there. So in this case, I will just use barium chloride as an example. OK, um, because let's pretend that I'm, I'm doing it on fresh test tube each time. So there's my sulfate ions. So if I use barium chloride, that's obviously going to immediately dissociate this to give me my barium ions and my chloride ions would not do anything. Uh, that's going to, of course, be aqueous. Then we're going to get barium sulfate. So there's our displacement. And that is a white solid precipitate. And that is how I know I've got a, a positive test result. I get a solid white precipitate. So white precipitate. Now, if you do this experiment, so if you put barium chloride in and you got a green precipitate, that is not a positive result. You must remember with these tests, the only positive, it is only a positive test result when it is the exact answer that you're expecting, a white precipitate. If it's a yellow precipitate, if it's anything else, we do not call that a positive test result. It can only be this. And in the previous tutorial, we mentioned this. Halide ions can be tested for by mixing the unknown compound with acidified silver nitrate. And again, we're going to get that displacement and a silver halide is going to be formed. And there were the three colours that we would get. 
So if we've got acidified silver nitrate, there it is, and we've got a halogen, so I'm going to use X to represent that, we're going to get a silver halide, and that's going to be a solid precipitate, and it's just going to leave my nitrate ion hanging around. So remember that if your X is um, chlorine, then it's going to be a white precipitate. If it's bromine, it's going to be cream. And if it's iodine, it's going to be yellow. If you don't get a precipitate, but you're told that there is a halide ion in there, then it's fluorine because that does not produce a precipitate. Now, if you're struggling to distinguish or differentiate between the colours with, with the naked eye, understandably, cream, yellow, white cream, very, very similar. There might be other impurities that are affecting the colours slightly. Then we can use ammonia solution. So remember, if we have um, silver chloride, then this is going to be soluble in dilute ammonia. That's double M. If it's silver bromide, it's going to be soluble in concentrated ammonia. And if it's silver iodide, then it is insoluble in ammonia. And what that looks like in a reaction would be my silver halide, which is a solid, reacting with ammonia, NH3, which will be aqueous, and it's going to form this, and then our X minus AQ. And that's why it is dissolved, the precipitate is dissolved, obviously, because my halide ion, if it is um, a chloride or bromide, then it's going to be able to distribute back into the solution. Okay, so let's just summarise that quickly. So no precipitate. We've got a white precipitate. And of course, write the full word. Cream precipitate and yellow precipitate. And we've got no precipitate, nothing to dissolve. Dissolves in dilute. Dissolves only in concentrated, not dilute. And insoluble does not dissolve for iodide ions. Now we're moving on to the cation that you need to know. So those are the three anions, carbonate, sulfate and halide ion test. This is now a cation. So we're testing for NH4 plus, the ammonium ion. So they can be tested by mixing the unknown compound with warm dilute sodium hydroxide solution. And then we're going to give off ammonia gas when we do that reaction. And it's going to turn damp red litmus paper blue. It's important that litmus paper is damp, okay? Because the gas will not dissolve onto the surface of the litmus paper unless it's damp. So in your exams, you have to use that phrasing. So NH4, we're going to react that with the sodium hydroxide solution, of which it's the OH minus, it's the active part of that. And we're going to get ammonium gas and just some water as well. Now, of course, that's liquid. Um, that's going to be a gas, that's the whole point. That's going to be aqueous and that's going to be aqueous. And this is what's going to turn red litmus paper, damp red litmus paper, blue. And you can see a setup for that experiment here. You often hang the litmus paper just over the edge of the test tube. Now, check your specification because some specifications need you to learn flame tests. Others don't. So don't learn things that you don't need to. Um, but some you do. So group one and two ions can be tested for using flame tests and different metals give different coloured flames. And this has been covered in a previous tutorial as well. And here's a summary of those flames and those colours. And go back to that tutorial if you want to have another check.